The next eWare Seed Grant project team is Dr. Paris Neri and Dr. John Hegarty with their research on facilitating affect regulation in youth with autism spectrum disorder. A little bit about the team. Dr. Paris Neri is a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Psychology supervised by Dr. Gross and Dr. Keith Marzullo. Her research focuses on the development and evaluation of vibrotactile technology to assist with affect regulation in neurotypical populations. She received her doctorate in the area of human computer interaction from the University of California, Santa Cruz, Department of Computer Science. Her work was funded by the National Science Foundation and Intel Labs. Dr. John P. Hegarty II is a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at Stanford University School of Medicine and is supervised by Dr. Antonio Hardin. Dr. Hegarty's research in the Autism and Developmental Disorders Research Program has focused on the use of non-invasive neuroimaging approaches to explain neurobiological variation in children with autism spectrum disorder and developing biomarkers to improve precision medicine. He received his doctorate from the Interdisciplinary Neuroscience Program at the University of Missouri, and his research has been funded by the Stanford University-based Society of Pediatric Scholars and the National Institutes of Health. Welcome, Paris Miri and John Hegarty. Thank you for having us, Angela. Um, and thank you so much for your kind introduction. John and I are delighted to be here today, and it's a pleasure to have a chance to talk to you about our multidisciplinary project progress. Uh, to set the stage, I would like to show you a video of a child diagnosed with autism. When it comes to autism, we want to show the good, the bad, and everything in between, staying mainly positive. However, sharing only positive and upbeat videos about autism undermines the struggle many families go through on a regular basis. Just breathe. Deep breath. Deep breath. You got it. Deep breath. Try to breathe. Deep. Deep. I like this. Go. I can't relax. It's okay. Deep, deep, deep. Deep. There you go. Good. Oops. There we go. So. I uh, just want to mention that the man talking in the video was a child's father. And after watching this video, we can conclude that practicing slow-paced breathing seems to be an effective uh, strategy to you know, address meltdowns. And what comes to mind is that, well, you know, this is an effective strategy for both neurodiverse and neurotypical population, but it's very hard to implement in the heat of the moment. Can we build a, a device that could facilitate slow-paced breathing in these moments? And what we built was a vibrotactile breathing pacer system. And you might ask, well, why haptics? I mean, um, in the meltdown situation, we saw that channels of auditory and visual are already overstimulated, so it makes a lot of sense to use another channel, which is the haptics. And we know from the work by Temple Grandin, uh, who innovated the squeeze machine for herself, uh, she uses a channel of uh, haptics, and it seems to be very effective. And then in terms of why vibrotactile, well, um, Notice that mobility and wearability are major and, you know, are major, imp they're very important factors that we need to, um, need to consider because, you know, the parents had to leave the mall if they had a means to calm the child down at that moment, they, they could have. All right, so um, our project has three stages. The first stage is usability. This is what we have worked on over the past seven, eight months. So we try to iron out all the usability of wrinkles of our system, make sure that it's seamless and it does the functionalities that it's supposed to do. And we got a lot of feedback and comments and um, basically guidelines from a team of experts who've been working with these children for the past decades. So we, after doing the, after taking care of the usability, that was the time to basically bring in the children into, um, into the equation. So um, this is uh, 
in this space, the idea is that we want to um, basically extend the system in a way that um, it accommodate and accommodate for uniqueness of each child um, that we will be um, basically running in the pilot study. So we will have like 12, 12 children, half with uh, intellectual disability, half with not having intellectual disability. And we're trying to extend our system to accommodate for their unique needs. And lastly, once the first two are taken care of, then we can launch a longitudinal study and test the efficacy of our system. Now, in terms of usability, I want to walk you through some criteria that we use in making our PACER system. So first was, you know, personalization of usability. If you're building a vibrotactile breeding PACER, we need to know each individual's breeding, slow pace breeding pace. Mine is seven, someone else could be five. So there is a range and that needs to be, um, you know, found. So one approach is like put a breeding gauge on someone and then calculate it. But we know with this population, we can't really constrain them. So we decided to extract that information from a pulse sensor. We know when you are breeding slowly, it, uh, the information about the number of breaths per minute can be extracted from the pulse data. The second one is sense of agency. We wanted the system to accommodate for sense of agency uh, for both the parent and the child. And in some cases actually, override the parents, um, you know, control when needed. So the child can actually um, turn off the device if the parent tried to start it on from their phone. We'll walk through this example in a demo that is coming up. Logging ability, of course, we want the data in terms of how much the, the parent, how much the device was on for how long, what, what patterns of vibration was playing to be um, sent up to a HIPAA compliance server as soon as possible. So we as researchers could kind of follow up with the parents and make sure that we understand whether the device was effective, what was the circumstances they used it and so forth. And of course the voiceover was an important feature we need to incorporate because half of, uh, you know, in, we will have intellectually challenged children and for them, we need to have a, like a setting that for every, um, basically every command in the app there would be a voiceover functionality. And then this one is animation of the pacer on the app. This is one of my favorite features because the idea is that you, you know, you saw in the video, the father was trying to help the child to do the slow pace breeding. So if there is a visual, um, you know, if there is a visual pacer on the app and the vibrations are happening on the device, the parent can A, evaluate that the child is actually following the pacer and B, they can, um, basically follow the pacer themselves from the visual cue. So to, to kind of promote and um, basically, you know, do a positive feedback, for, um, positive reinforcement for the child to follow the pacer. And everything had to be brief. We, we learned that we do not have the attention of the child more than a minute. So we have to break down a lot of pieces to make sure that we accommodate for it. Um, in the demo, I'll show you a case where we have like four minutes of audio that the participant uh, has to listen to during the time that we will collect this, um, you know, the pace, uh, the, the, the slow pace, the, the slow pace for each uh, child. So we had to break it down into multiple segments and make sure that the parent can stop and replay however many times that they need to. And lastly is the time anticipation. We, even if it's 20 seconds that, you know, the vibration is going to happen, 20 seconds, it has to be kind of um, communicated uh, to the children. This also allows the caregiver to um, basically work with the kid to make sure that uh, the kid has, um, you know, has an understanding and expectation of what's going on. Now, this is a visual of our system. There are two pacers, you know, breeding is a symmetric experience. So we wanted to have two pacers, one on the left side of the body, the other on the left side, right side of the body. At this point, we don't really uh, care about the location on the body because that's the usability. As a usability, we just want it to be compact enough. And um, during the adaptability phase, we will, we will tailor that. And uh, there's an app that allows for personalization and then the data will be sent up to the server. Now, without further ado, let's watch um, a few demos. So first we want to show that we can control the device from the buttons on each of them. So if you press the play button on either of the devices, you'll be able to start the vibrations. You can see the vibrations have two different frequencies. So if you're not, you can tell which one is inhalation, which one is exhalation. Also the patterns can be played through the app and the vibrations are always synchronized. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, the noise that you hear is because it's against a hard server when it's a surface, but on the body, we're not gonna hear any noise. So here's an example of keeping a list of all existing personalized patterns. Let's say you want to, you know, uh, and the star demonstrates the default pattern. So now let's say I wanna change the default pattern to something else. So I just played it and now I'm gonna make some extra modifications to that pattern and say, well, this is my pattern when I wanna go to the mall, for example. It has to have certain intensity and uh, some of the other measurements. Here is about the sense of agency. So initially I'm gonna open up the app and show that the two pacers are paired with the app, you know, sampled haptic A and B, these are the devices. And then I'm gonna close the app so then the devices will go into, um, into a mode that they are trying to pair with each other. So then I press another uh, button on the device and they will pair to each other. And now if I press play, uh, the play and the stop will happen on the device. And if I app, open up the app again, you'll see that they are not paired to the phone anymore. So you can't really control them from the phone. But if you want to regain the control back, um, there's a different button that we'll press on the any of the pacers and they will both disconnect from each other and we'll connect back to the app. So I stopped it and now um, you can see they're back connected to the app. Okay, so this is the part about the visualization. So the vibrations and the pacer, uh, the, the visual and the the pacers are synchronized. Now here is about inferring the breathing rate. So the participant has to go through a couple of steps. So we had to break this audio into multiple segments. We begin by teaching you a few breathing techniques. Let's practice these techniques together as I explain. The first technique I would like to suggest is to imagine you're taking a breath in from your feet and up to your stomach. You will then exhale from your stump. The second technique is to slowly begin by taking deeper and longer breaths. I will now begin recording your breathing for about two minutes. And we're not playing the audio. Please keep your fingers still on the green light during this time. Okay. Now, let us start by becoming aware of our breathing. And at the end of the stage, the breathing is uh, estimated. I'm going to show you a few pictures of the form factor design. Again, the goal was to just make something compact that can sit on the hand and don't worry about the placement on the body at this stage. And here what we have. Okay. We'll quickly go to the next. Uh, all right. Oops. Great. So now in terms of adaptability, uh, I just want to mention that we will ship these devices in mid-March to uh, these families. They will receive the packages, they will open it into a Zoom session. We will ask them to do certain tasks and this process will continue for four times. And every time they send us the device back, we will go ahead and uh, implement the requests and the functionalities that are required. And then after that phase is over for the efficacy, we're going to launch a longitudinal study with 30 participants that we will balance across uh, the two teams of uh, the, the crew groups with IQ, sensitivity, and verbal ability. All right, I just wanna take a moment and thank my fabulous interns that have worked very hard on this project and exceeded our expectations. It was very hard because they had to go back to their countries and it was really difficult to make sure that they would you know, do the time management in terms of uh, being uh, cross-continental. 
And I want to thank all of the faculties and researchers that have collaborated with us and have gone out of their way to support us on this project. And lastly, I want to thank my co-pilot, John. He has been tremendous help, mentor, and I do I can't ask for any better partner to work on this project with. Thank you so much, and I'm ready to take questions. I right, thank you so much, Paris and John Higgerty. So um, with the questions might come in on the q a please look for them um, and you know, really thank you for this research and it's exciting that you'll be rolling these out on a pilot study certainly will be helpful to children with autism and their families but also you'll get a lot of learning on how to fine tune these approaches for uh, children with this disorder so thank you, thank you.